Today on the newscast, you know about Masada, but what about Lakish? Danny the Digger Herman is with us to share the inside story of a pivotal biblical battle that you may not have heard about. That's next. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast. Last day on vacation. We head back home tomorrow. It's been a great week with my beautiful wife and my daughters as we're just relaxing about a block from the beach here. We've had great weather, as you can see, so it has been a blessing. But I've still been coming to you every day with a brand new Watchman Newscast. If you missed any of them, just check them out here in our archives under Newscast. And while you're there, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you get alerts every time a new video is posted. Hey, I want to get right into it today. It's Friday, so I thought this would be a great day for some biblical archaeology. If you watch a newscast on a regular basis, you know that is one of our passions here, the archaeology coming from the Bible and biblical history. We've got a great one for you today from Lachish. Now, you've heard about the siege of Masada, but the siege of Lachish, according to our good friend Danny the Digger, who you're, who you're about to see, he says Lachish is every bit as important, perhaps, as Masada. It is laid out in 2 Kings, in your Bible, also mentioned in 2 Chronicles, uh, Jeremiah, and Isaiah. It is a fascinating and important story, little told, that we thought you would like to hear about. So let's head right now to the land of Israel and the ancient ruins of Tel Lachish. <laughs> Well, Danny the Digger, welcome back to The Watchman, my friend. And look, you always take us to some of the most fascinating archeological historical sites here in the land of Israel, the land of the Bible. But I am particularly excited today about where we are, Lachish. I would say, Danny, this is one of the more overlooked, but very, very important sites here in Israel. Tell us about this amazing place. Yes, perhaps this is one of the most underestimated sites in Israel from ancient history. We've been to Masada. Crowds go there on a daily basis with the cable car. And something uh, just as dramatic happened here 700 years earlier. Where are the crowds? Yeah. We are right in front of the very ramp that was created around the year 701 BC by the mighty neo-Assyrian forces who were determined to conquer the second biggest city of the Judean Empire. As you mentioned, Danny, this was the second largest city uh, next to Jerusalem in the Judean Kingdom. That's fascinating. Tell us a little bit about uh, what Lachish looked like in that day, how many people lived here. This was a thriving center. It is actually bigger than biblical Jerusalem. Uh, so we think that maybe 10,000 people uh, settled here. There were also a lot of farms around. The vineyards that you see to this day were also probably the landscape and the main economical drive in this area, as well as trade. The international highway, the Via Maris, passing not so far away from here. And what is that? When you say the international highway, what do you mean by that? The ancient Near East developed along big rivers. The pharaohs in Egypt along the Nile, and the Akkadian cultures along the Mesopotamia, along the uh, area between the Mesopotamos, the two rivers, Tigris and Euphrates. Modern day Iraq. Modern day Iraq and, and Syria. Yeah. And these two big global forces uh, would interact with one another, either trade or battle, and this land is in the middle. This is really Lachish is at a crossroads. At the very junction uh, of a very important international highway system by ancient uh, terms. The Israelites really settled here uh, in on an intense level from the 9th century, 8th century, but then in 701, the Neo-Assyrian Empire, after conquering and exiling all the tribes of the north, the Israelites, Sennacherib's eyes are on the southern uh, area. Right. Jerusalem is the capital, but Lachish is the real economical center, as well as trade center. Yeah. For our viewers, Danny, give us a little bit of background on the Assyrians, uh, King Sennacherib. Uh, this was in its day, 7th century, thereabout, 6th, 7th century. This was the powerhouse in the Middle East, right? Tell us a little bit about the Assyrian Empire. They are a force established, again, along the Tigris and the Euphrates, the 
Iraq of today, uh, Baghdad of today would be then uh, Nineveh. The biblical city of Nineveh. Yeah, which Jonah took uh, three days to cross according to the biblical account. Sennacherib ruling in that part establishes a power that is equivalent to what the Roman Empire will later be. Okay, it's the first imperial power uh, that just uh, goes against all its frontiers and crushes any resistance and enslaves the people uh, with extreme brutality. Tiglat Pil Eser and Sargon have conquered the northern area. Sennacherib is the next generation. His eyes is really towards Egypt. And that's where the 10 lost tribes of Israel came from, by the way. The Assyrians carted off the northern tribes, the 10 lost tribes of Israel. And we lost them. Yeah. We, we don't know. We don't have any Ephraimites or Menashites walking among us today. Yeah, so now Sennacherib, the 10 tribes, the northern part of the land of Israel is conquered. Now he is turning his sights towards the south. And that's where Lachish comes in. He wants to get both a hold of this region and open as well the region for uh, continuing to Egypt. The main goal is Egypt. There's a lot more wealth in Egypt, Egypt that he wishes to capture, and Lachish is in the way. Lachish must be taken. Must be taken. So in 701 BC, we have it very well documented, mostly by Sennacherib. The Bible only hints to this campaign. He comes with his forces, and he camps and besieges the city. He makes a ramp that will be built against one of its corners and eventually he conquers it. We know this from archaeology, not from the Bible, but not local archaeology. It's finds that were made in Nineveh in the 19th century. And after the finds were made there, then local archaeologists here started asking, where did it happen? And eventually we found out right here. Wow. You are looking at the very ramp that the Assyrians built against where the flag of Israel is today. And we have here uh, uh, stones that are like the size of tennis balls from the slingshots. We found countless arrowheads, helmet decorations, okay? There was a fierce battle at this very place, which is now nice and quiet. You had mentioned on our way over that King Sennacherib may have actually been here at the Siege of Lachish, the powerful king of the Assyrian Empire. Yeah, he personally led his forces. So he was here, he personally led his forces. I think he camped over there. This is like a hill viewing the site. And if this is the, the place of the ramp, then he probably sat and commanded and monitored that it's done properly. Sennacherib is here, he's camped out. What does he see? What, what is going on here? Two uh, sets of walls around the top of the mound. He sees a gate complex over here, which is always the most vulnerable part of the site. But that gate is a very well designed with two actual gates and a killing zone in the middle. He knows that attacking from the gate might put him into a trap. He chooses the spot where the hill around the mountain is not as steep. And his soldiers then start putting a lot of stones. Look, we found them. A lot, a lot of er beaten earth and stones and a fill to eventually create a ramp that will enable battering ram to pound against the wall. Very similar to Masada. Very similar story. And even a more heroic one, because at Masada, at the end, they committed suicide. Here, it seems that they battled till the bitter end. And we have found archeological evidence of apparently those who lost in battle. We found two caves filled with skulls. Skulls, meaning whoever they captured, they chopped their heads off and someone later piled it into a cave in this city. Look, we had fierce, a Jewish Israelite resistance here uh, to the siege, but I imagine once the Assyrians broke through, uh, it had to be bloody and there had to be a lot of carnage. Yes, level three in Lachish, the destruction level caused by Sennacherib and his Assyrian forces is a very clear, thick layer of dark ash in total destruction. Now folks, there is more to the story. What happened after Tel Lachish Needless to say, Jerusalem did not fall. You can get the entire story by watching our full episode on the Watchmen TV show, episode 73. You can find it here on our archives on the channel. By the way, if you like that clip and want to see more like it, be sure to tune in every Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Time and Fridays at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time to our weekly Watchmen TV show, 
uh, on TBN. And if you want to get an exclusive first look before anyone else at the show, you can become a Watchman Premium member. Just go to our homepage here and click on join. And for just $4.99 a month, you can become a Watchman Premium member. Number one, you help to keep us on the air with your contribution. And number two, you get that exclusive first look at every new episode. Plus, we've got some good perks coming for you down the line very soon, as soon as I get back from vacation, including some exclusive premium member Q&A sessions. We think you're really gonna like it. If you're not a premium member, don't worry, we still love you, but we just wanted to offer something a little extra for our watchmen and women on the wall who are with us every single day faithfully. Hey, it's been a great week here on vacation, but I'll be back in the lab on Monday in the Watchmen studio. Until then, have a great weekend. God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace. Hey, everyone. Thanks for checking out the Watchmen newscast. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, click subscribe, and tap the bell icon to turn on notifications for new Watchmen newscast episodes every weekday. 